Living with hearing impairment poses a significant challenge to any child. At Oticon, we recognize the important role we play in partnering with you, the audiologist, in creating a better future for every child with hearing loss. We recognize it's our role to create excellent technologies that can be adapted to the individual needs of each child and reflect the practicalities of living day to day with hearing loss. Whenever hearing aids are fit to children, accuracy is extremely important. The DSL approach provides very specific gain guidelines that should be provided in order to provide full audibility for the child with hearing loss. Further, audiologists have recognized the importance of creating solutions that reflect the individual acoustic characteristics of each child's external auditory system. When real ear techniques are used to verify fittings, at times there can be a mismatch between the specifications as called for by DSL and what the hearing aids actually provide. One approach to correct for these differences is to create an individual real ear to coupler difference value for each child. What this does is account for the individual acoustics for each child's auditory system. However, there are times where even after an individual RECD is created, there's still a mismatch between the gain specifications as called for by DSL or NAL or any other fitting rationale and what the hearing aids actually create. There are specific reasons why this can occur. For example, if a hearing aid is fit with a relatively large event, it may be very difficult to actually achieve the gain values in the low frequencies that are called for by the fitting rationale. Another example would be a child with a significant amount of hearing loss in the high frequencies. The DSL fitting rationale especially calls for very high levels of gain, especially above 4 kilohertz, and it gain levels that are typically not achievable in modern day hearing aids. Finally, every hearing aid is made of specific electroacoustic components like ear hooks and receivers. These ear hooks and receivers can cause certain peaks and valleys in the response of the hearing aid, and those peaks and valleys may cause a slight mismatch in certain frequency regions between the target and what is actually created by the hearing aid. Historically in Genie, we've provided you with an estimate of what we think the hearing aid should pro be providing on the child's ear. This response includes not just the effects of the proposed target as specified by DSL, but also the ex expected effects of other acoustic influences on the hearing aid fitting. For example, if the hearing aid is fit to an open vent, or if there's a significant amount of hearing loss in the high frequencies, and we simply cannot provide the gain called for by the fitting rationale without significantly increasing the risk of feedback. Also at times, the electroacoustic response of things like ear hooks or receivers might cause certain peaks and valleys in the, in the response that'll cause slight mismatches between what is proposed by the fitting rationale and what we can actually provide. For most hearing losses, the estimates that we provide in Genie correspond very closely to what you'll actually see on your real ear targets. The only time when significant mismatches start to occur is, again, when there's significant venting in the hearing aid or when the amount of high frequency gain proposed is significantly higher than can be reasonably created in today's hearing aids. Starting with the release of Genie 14.1 in the first half of 2014, we're going to change the way we show the screens in Genie and the way we show targets in those fitting screens. When you open up a Genie fitting screen, you'll now see two different lines on the graph. The dotted line called target is the theoretical target as called for by DSL. The solid line is called simulation, and that is what we expect to provide in the child's ear canal. The simulation is based on our attempt to meet the targets as called for by DSL, but with any corrections that are necessary for acoustic reasons. For example, if there's a large vent in play, or if the proposed gain in the high frequencies are at particularly high levels. In those cases, there may be a mismatch between the theoretical target and what we actually expect the hearing aid to provide to you. That way, when you see the same response in your real ear machine, you'll understand where these mismatches occur. If we take a look at a few examples, you'll see these principles in action. In this first case, we have a Sensei Pro BTE with a small vent in the ear mold. This hearing aid is being fit to a moderate, flat, sensory neural hearing loss. As you can tell, the target, as called for by DSL shown in the dotted line, and our simulation, or what we expect to actually provide the child, are quite close throughout most of the frequency range. 
There are some frequencies where there are small disparities, but for the most part, what we expect to provide into the child's ear canal is quite close to what DSL calls for. In the second example, we're fitting the same hearing loss with the same hearing aid, a Sensei Pro BTE. But in this case, we have opened up the venting to three millimeters. This might be the size venting you would use, for example, if a child has a history of draining external or middle ear. In such a case, you want to keep the ear canal as open as possible. With that vent in place, you'll see that the target called for by DSL and our simulation are quite similar in the mid and higher frequencies. In the lower frequencies, because of the acoustics of a vent that size, we are not reaching DSL targets and we don't expect to reach DSL targets. There's a reason why the venting, the wide open venting is being used, and that's going to lead to a situation where at 500 hertz, and especially at 250 hertz, you're simply not going to be reaching the targets as called for by DSL. In the third case, we're fitting a Sensei Pro BTE, but this time we're fitting it to a severe hearing loss. What you can see is that throughout most of the frequency range, the simulation of what we believe we would provide in the child's ear canal is quite close to the targets called for by DSL. One thing to remember with pediatric hearing aid fittings is that the output displayed is an estimate. For an actual measurement of the hearing aid output, computer-based verification incorporating real ear to coupler measurements will always give the most accurate measurement of the hearing aid output in the child's ear canal. This approach of showing both the theoretical target and our simulation is available anytime you're fitting the DSL fitting rationale using Sensei or Sensei Pro, Alta or Alta Pro, Nira or Nira Pro, or the new RIA or RIA Pro. We certainly respect the important work that went into the development of the NAL and DSL fitting rationales, but we also recommend that there are practical limitations to modern day hearing aids. With this new approach that, of showing both types of curves in Gini, we're trying to increase the transparency for you to understand why the variations in fittings may occur. We want to put all the information possible in your hands so you can make decisions about how to manage children. Providing care to the child with hearing loss is a tremendous responsibility that you have taken on. We also have a responsibility to support you in any way possible in order to create the very best fittings as possible. This new fitting approach that we have developed for Genie is one way that we can improve the transparency of the way our technologies work to give you a better opportunity to create the very best fittings for children. The better fittings for children that you can create, the better opportunities these children have to live to the fullest degree and fullest extent possible. Thank you.